What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today we're doing a quick update on Starlink because I just got an email yesterday from the company um, saying that I could enter in my exact address beyond just my zip code as they were moving one step forward from launching the private beta for Starlink. So, I mean, for those who don't know, Starlink, the internet uh, service that SpaceX is working on launching thousands of low Earth orbit satellites beaming down high-speed broadband, potential quality internet um, to the whole wide world. I mean, as much as Elon Musk overpromises, underdelivers is late on some stuff. This is something that has been executing like crazy in the background, um, has made huge and tremendous progress, and is right around the corner from a commercial launch. That's This isn't a science project anymore. There's already 500 plus of these satellites in the sky, and SpaceX, if you go to their website, is still saying that they are planning to do operations this summer um, in the northern U.S. and Canada in 2020 and rapidly expanding to near global coverage of the populated world by 2021. I mean, they even say in the email that I got, um, that they're working on this and that they they confirm that Starlink private beta begins this summer with public beta to follow. I mean, we're already in July. So the fact that this is right around the corner from actually launching, they're getting customers onboarded um, to be potential beta customers if they're high enough altitude where the satellites are orbiting um, and you're in this potential area, then you actually might get one of these receivers um, that are gonna allow you to get the Starlink internet, how much it costs, what the service are, what the specs are. We don't know any of that. We don't even really know what the receiver looks like, um, but this is so so, so exciting. I think one, this is one of the coolest, craziest things going on in the Elon Musk empire that just has a massive, um, supremely underrated potential to totally transform the world, connect the half of the planet that's not on the internet, make the other half of the planet who's trying to get on the internet a much more seamless and alternative option to get on the internet that's ubiquitous, that's everywhere. Think if you want to do an RV camping trip and you're sustainable off the grid Tesla, and then you can have Starlink on the roof and, you know, travel the world. Like, I don't know, there's just so many awesome ideas for this technology. Um, and I'm, and I think it's potentially going to be one of the world's largest companies. I mean, internet broadband service is a multi hundreds of billions dollar market. It's the backbone of how our entire digital economy functions. Um, and in many places it's an oligopoly or a monopoly where you only have one or two options, extremely bad customer service, notorious in the internet space. So customers like myself are like, wait, like we have this alternative that's built by Elon Musk. That's launched by SpaceX. That's launching this crazy next generation satellite internet. Like of course I want to sign up. And Elon Musk's clout has led to, you know, think about the marketing. SpaceX and Starlink has done zero marketing, yet they're getting thousands of people to sign up, begging to be a part of this beta program. Um, I think it's literally only, it's like Tesla when they sell cars. They can literally sell every single car they produce. SpaceX's Starlink is going to be constrained by, you know, so many people want to use this network and they literally don't even have the bandwidth to handle it. Um, but that's going to be how it's going to launch. And I just think this is so, so exciting and literally cannot just reference that like, I just got the email that says I'm going to be, or that beta testing is happening this summer. Like this is here. This is Starlink has arrived or is about to. Um, and I just think this is so, so exciting and it will instantly turn into a massively huge recurring revenue business for SpaceX where they're getting up, you know, tens of thousands, eventually millions of customers paying them a monthly fee to sign up and get access to this network. Um, you think of the market capitalizations of internet companies. I think this could be, you know, Starlink itself is like a multi hundred billion dollar company potentially that is about to be launched and built right before our eyes. SpaceX, Gwen Shotwell have also, there's been a lot of rumors of like, will they spin out Starlink, the potential IPO, um, you know, that's something that we don't know about. They haven't officially commented on. I had never thought about until I um, heard Gwyn Shotwell mention this concept of potentially spinning out Starlink. I still think that would be about a year or two away, but that's a very fascinating concept of having a, an exclusive IPO of SpaceX's satellite internet business. I would probably buy in because I'm so pumped and I can't wait to be a customer um, of this as well. I mean, just to give you a little flavor of the technology here, they have some awesome of like what they're actually doing. I mean, SpaceX, the best launch, cheapest launch technology in the world, reusable rockets on the back of that innovation here is launching these massive rows of satellites and they launch like 50 or 60 at a time. They already have 500 plus. They're continually launching more and more like every couple of weeks, 260 grams per satellite, this kind of dope flat design. Um, they stack and they deploy them. Each of them have these four power phased antennas on each satellite. An enormous amount of throughput can be placed and redirected in a short term for an order of magnitude, lower cost. Singular solar array, so these things are solar powered too, significantly simplifying the system. Solar cells are standardized, easy to integrate into the manufacturing process. Additionally, these satellites are equipped with ion propulsion systems. Uh, these ion thrusters powered by Krypton enable the satellite's orbit to raise, maneuver in space, deorbit at the end of their useful life. Starlink is the first Krypton propelled spacecraft ever flown. I mean, this is like, 
you can't get more sci-fi than this, literally powered by Krypton to make like micro movements in the satellites to, you know, evade objects, optimize orbit, all of this stuff. I mean, the level of technology, we've had satellite internet for decades, but the level of, you know, Elon Muskified crazy Iron Man technology that's going into this is just sick to, to give us an unbelievably fast, reliable internet connection at a low cost. So that's the goal. Star Tracker, custom in how built navigation centers tell each satellite its attitude, which enables to help precision placement of the broadband throughput. I mean, I, I can't even begin to wrap my head around how complex it is to launch a, a project of this magnitude. They also have autonomous uh, collision avoidance, probably easier to program an autonomous satellite in space than a car on the road, but I don't know, but apparently they're working on that too. Um, they utilize inputs from the DOD's debris tracking system to autonomously perform maneuvers to get out of space debris. Um, this capability reduces human error, allowing for a more reliable approach to collision avoidance. So, you know, this is much, this is an extremely high tech, you know, SpaceX had to innovate on what the satellite is, how it works, the technology in that satellite. And now it's about transitioning this from the science project test phase. Elon Musk did actually claim to send a tweet from Starlink uh, a little while ago, which I thought was pretty epic. To me, I was like, man, like, there's a lot of crappy internet Wi-Fi's where it's tough to send a tweet. So if you can already figure out how to send a tweet on Starlink, I mean, that's pretty, you know, that's impressive. It's working at least. But, um, you know, this is really going to be where the rubber meets the road. You know, now when they start to get thousands of potential networks, people joining, you know, seeing how good the service is, how is the lag? A bunch of you have been complaining about my live streams because there's lag. Like, is Starlink going to be better? Like, I think there's a huge thirst to get a better, faster, smoother internet connection for every human around the world. And SpaceX is launching it and it's weeks around the corner. Hyper change in the internet broadband space. So pumped. Would love to know what you think in the comments below. Keep me posted if you're on the beta list and you're about to get Starlink. Like, I'm going to keep you guys posted. If I get my hands on this, I'm for sure going to make a video and like, yeah, you'll be, you'll be hearing about it. Anyway, Elon, SpaceX, if you're watching this, put me on the list. Like, I'll change my, I'll move to wherever the best beta location is. If you're like, you got to go way up in Canada for this to work, like, I'm there, you know? Send the Starlink thing, I'll meet you there, and I'm down to test it and do a live stream. We'll see how it works. Anyway, see y'all next time. Huge shout out to our Patreon supporters, producers. I'll put a link below if y'all want to sign up for Starlink and, you know, see what happens. Peace.